today with us. So it's uh, October 2019, and it's exactly 10 years from the moment I left my home country, Senegal, to move to France to start my journey in AI. And this is actually an ordinary story for every young African. You start your studies back home, and when comes the moment where you have to do advanced studies in a particular and very specialized field, you move in a distant country, most likely in the U Europe or North America, to push the boundaries forward and uh, complete graduate studies in a, in a different field. So this is actually the reason why institutions like AIMS are important in this continent. And in the past 15 years, the commitment of AIMS has been to provide very specialized and excellent education in mathematics and its applications here in Africa to young Africans. I'm happy today to be part of this big and enthusiastic and impactful family. And I thank you all uh, for welcoming me as part of this family since a few months now. So investing in uh, in AI and uh, in research in general is certainly the most, the best investment one can make today to change, profoundly change and impact um, the situation of our continent. And this has happened throughout history, in fact, in different places. So I want just to tell you a story that exemplifies this, which is a story I read in a book. So in, a, in the, the, the end of the 19th century, the city of New York convened a gathering with many statisticians and urban planists and, and you know, many different kinds of scientists. And the goal of that gathering was to get together and think about what, will, what the, fu the future of the city of New York will be in 50 years. And after a few days, they concluded that they finished their discussions and handed the conclusions of that discussion to the authorities. And the conclusions of the discussion were that in 50 years' time, the city of New York would not exist anymore. And the reason was simple. In fact, they, they drew the lines and extrapolated, and they said that given the, the size of the population and the rate at which it is growing, and given the number of horses that they will need to transport this population, the amount of manure that is produced by these horses is not compatible with human life. So New York will not exist anymore. In fact, New York still exists and we go there from time to time. And what has happened in between is that a few years after that gathering, some people a few hundred kilometers further from New York at Dearborn in Michigan, Henry Ford uh, and his colleagues started producing uh, cars. So that's what, that's what a technological revolution does. It finds a situation that is sometimes judged as being hopeless and completely changes the course of history. I believe the same thing is happening today with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So machine learning is already profoundly revolutionizing critical aspects of our life. It is enhancing medical diagnosis, it speeds industrial processes, and enables scientific discoveries. It will allow us to usefully gather and analyze vast data sets and extract insights to improve decision making and public policy in diverse areas from education to health, agriculture, transportation, and finance. In fact, economists now call it a general purpose technology to emphasize its impact and its power over many sectors. So in the past decades, thanks to important public and private investments, such as investment made by Google and Facebook, machine intelligence has rapidly progressed in both in its research and development and its application to solve fundamental problems. However, the talent pool advancing this research is concentrated in certain regions of, of the world. So in particular, it is particularly concentrated in Europe and in North America. African scientists in general are hardly represented. 
I've been attending machine learning conferences every year since several years now. And I remember in the Neural Information Processing Systems Conference in 2016, which gathered over 5,000 people, we were less than 10 African or African Americans. This situation leads to many problems which Yossi and Jerome has already talked about. We already know about biases in machines. But I want to tell you that the most important problem that this lack of representation creates is the number of challenges which we could tackle and solve and which will remain unsolved just because we do not have the right perspective represented in the field. In fact, our research and development and the, the problems that we pick and that we, uh, we, we choose to solve are influenced by our backgrounds, our environment, in our own stories. And for these reasons, we need a more diverse representation. If Africa continues to be bypassed by the machine intelligence revolution, a rare opportunity will be missed to alleviate global and economic disparities. Conversely, creating an effective, globally connected community of machine intelligence practitioners in Africa will reduce the technology gap. It will strengthen Africa's economies and enable better government, governance. It will reduce the technology gap. It will strengthen African economies and enable better governance. Africa is home to the youngest population. This is a vast pool of talent whose enthusiasm for machine intelligence is well illustrated by the success of various organizations such as the Black in AI organization which we co-founded a few years ago, but also through summer schools such as Data Science Africa or the recently convened Deep Learning in Daba. For all these reasons, we are extremely happy today to be launching the continent's flagship graduate program in machine intelligence, the African Masters of Machine Intelligence here at Ames. So AMI is a one-year intensive program. It will provide brilliant young Africans with state-of-the-art training in machine intelligence and its application. It will open the doors of world-class research and building new technologies. And I would like to offer our profound thanks to Google and Facebook for supporting us in this adventure. I used to work for Facebook. I now work for Google. And I personally know the deep commitment of both of these organizations to positively impacting the world with technology. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, Yossi. So every course in the African Masters of Machine Intelligence is taught by some of the best scientists in the field. Some have taken sabbaticals, such as Mark Dysonroth, who comes to us from Imperial College. Thank you, Mark, for your commitment. And some will soon join us and spend several weeks to teach the students their science and open them the doors of research in this field. We express our profound thanks to all these researchers. My secret dream is that in five years, every course in this program will still be taught by some of the best scientists in the field. The only difference will be that most of these scientists will be alumni of this program. <laughs> Sorry, I have a call. I went for a gorilla trekking yesterday. It was wonderful, by the way. It's actually quite cold at 3,000 meters up there. It's so in, in the future, we plan to launch AMI in other African countries, starting next year, in fact, spreading its impact across the continent. We expect a significant part of the AMI cohort to continue on PhD programs or to join the best industrial labs 
and public R&D labs in Africa and beyond. They will be the pioneers of an ecosystem of African machine intelligence scientists bringing a fresh perspective to the global scientific community and achieving crucial breakthrough. In the long term, we expect AMI graduates to make enormous contributions to their home countries and to the continent by delivering technological solutions which improve critical aspects such as agriculture, education, health, and various other scientific fields. This will boost industry, employment, and economic growth. Africa is today the youngest continent on Earth. In fact, I'm 33 years old, but in my home country, I'm older than 70% of the population. Africa also has the fastest growing population, and it is the most diverse place on this planet. And for all these reasons, we are uniquely positioned to demonstrate the benefits of AI for society today. AI is not the future, neither is the African youth. They are both present realities. And if they meet here in Africa at AMI, they will meet, make the technology a transformative instrument for the good of humanity everywhere. Thank you. <laughs>